Peace and blessings, people. Peace and blessings. Assalamu alaikum. Shalom to the Hebrews out there on the Sabbath. Uh, this is your boy, Musa. As a car bringing you that heat. Once again, I believe this is my last video for the day. Um, I've gotten out of my circumference today. And I'm not going to lie to you, it's, it's difficult. It's very uh, challenging if you're not uh, used to so. I'm such an uh, introverted person. And telling the introverted person to go outside of its circumference um, it's pretty um, it's going to be humbling uh, terrifying um, uh, xenophobish xenophobia-ish because just the fear of unknown you don't know what you may encounter Well, in doing so, stepping out your uh, circumference, you'll, you'll, you'll find yourself uh, learning yourself. Uh, you don't look at back at your reflection or your pain and stay there and be at a stasis of Stasis moment. You have to be like first. You got to be like football, man. You gotta gotta keep the chains moving. You gotta get the chains moving and, and and pull that swag back out of the corner. You gotta derive that that swag back out of the corner, out of the closet. You know, get your shoulders square. You know, eyes directly, contact link to link, sink to sink. You know, you got to get that thing out the mud and just be a man, you know. And reflection should always just be a way of making your day better the next day or the next second, actually. If you could just have amnesia. <laughs> but unfortunately, it's it's not that easy. It's not that easy. But uh, like, share, and subscribe. Like, share, and subscribe, man. I, I, I got this copyright disclaimer, which you've seen at the beginning of the video, which I'm going to put anyway, at the beginning and the end. Uh, Jordan Peterson, man, I, I, I've I been slipping, I have, I've been slipping on this man, he's a godsend to some people, and very controversial, very controversial, shout out, shout out to uh, Maurice Walk, getting faded. I tell you what, man. <laughs> that corn syrup. Hold up, Dow Pie. Hold up, Dow Pie. I'll get that later. Okay, that. Yeah. That corn syrup. Walk. No joke. No joke. But no further ado. With no further ado, I want to thank you for your time and your patience, everybody. We're going to get right to this audio and take some notes. Take some notes. And my man is very scientific. With his progression, the man got over millions to eight point million. He got some subscribers, a lot of them, a lot of them. And right now, subscribe to uh, Be Inspired. That's some content I'm getting this from. But Jordan Peterson, Jordan Peterson is the man. He the man, take it or leave it. There goes some of the audio, let's cook. Many men are petrified by women they won't approach them at all men get confused with women they have no idea how to talk to them they're just petrified into immobility if you're chronically rejected by people it's often because of your own insufficiencies you know whether that's cowardice or lack of social skills or whatever it is it's like you can't just brush it off as oh well you know no one likes me but really i'm okay it's like no no wrong if everyone rejects you there's probably something wrong. And so the way, what the females seem to be doing is use some marker or some set of markers as a proxy indicator for... That's, that's true. That is true. 
I see a lot of guys that that's walk around with their head down and, oh, maybe I'll find love one day. And, you know, it'll just be when it just be. No, you got to put some force time distance to that thing. You got to put some work to it. It ain't just going to fall out the sky. You know what I'm saying? You got to, you got to, uh, you got to chisel at yourself. Mold yourself. Build yourself up. You know what I'm saying? Uh, edification is always good. Refinement is always good. Gold got to go through a purif uh, purifying uh, process. It just don't happen overnight. You know, Batman did become, Bruce Wayne did become Batman in a, in a one day. Ah, excuse me on that. Um, but you no, know, he didn't become Batman in one day. It was a process that he had to go through, pain and suffering, uh, obstacles, training, discipline, execution, will. These are all the things you need to do be uh, in a, in able to um, uh, 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 carry out the means of being successful. As an individual, but as a man, you know, women don't like no weak individual. They like to see a man come over and take over the atmosphere. And they, yes, they do choose. They do choose. Yes, they do. They do choose. Using some marker or some set of markers as a proxy indicator for, for, for health. And I think you could say reasonable that reasonably that female human beings do the same thing to male human beings. And there's some of that vice versa, too. Like we evaluate each other, for example, for symmetry, which is one of the elements of beauty, because healthier people tend to be more symmetrical. And lots of animals use symmetry. So symmetry is a marker. And there's other markers like shoulder width to waist width is one and waist width to hip width is another. That's usually what. Males use that to evaluate females in part. So there's lots of markers of health. Um, but it also looks to me like the, the, the data worldwide seems to indicate that women, so imagine that women mate across dominant hierarchies and up, socioeconomically speaking. And on average, across cultures, women go for men who are about four to five years older. You know, it varies. In the Scandinavian countries, that's shrunk a little bit, but not that much. And in other cultures, it's bigger. I would say that depends to some degree on difficulty of establishing economic independence, right? Because in richer countries, it's easier to have enough economic independence if you're a male to be, to be a useful participant in the process of having children. Um, but it doesn't matter cross-culturally. It's still across and up where men mate across and down. They don't care much about socioeconomic status. It doesn't seem to be part of their selection method, um, generally speaking. So... I think that part of that is also the, the ability of women to select for, for male health. It's something like that because it isn't that only that. Because if you're healthy and energetic, you're much more likely to be successful because it's very hard to be successful if you're ill, obviously. I mean, so, because. I tell men all the time you know, men, you need to get that cardio in, put down the sugars, put down the fried food. You know, treat yourself once a week, gradually do so. But you need to have some physical uh, shapeness about yourself. That way you can focus up your head to get your mental right. Because it's nothing more, I believe, a woman loves to see a man that's, that can properly uh, uh, communicate and, and, and express his being, his himself, uh, mentally, uh, physically, and financially. A woman love hypergamy. They she they love a lifestyle of hypergamy. They're gonna go with the guy. I mean that's this is cool, but they're gonna respect the resources. They're gonna respect the resources, and being physical fit is a start. Um, is a start at beginning that journey, uh, in order for you to fulfill your goal. If you're trying to be successful. And step your games up, fellas. I mean, it is what it is on there. You can't be no lame. Can't be scared. You got to go out there and do that thing. Professor, go ahead and cook. The competition's just too high. 
and both both genders both sexes select each other for attractiveness both select for intelligence both select for personality although the, the, the different there are differences there in terms of what's what's stressed even something as simple as like eye contact in a situation where there's a possibility of finding a sexual partner is a very important component of that because eye contact indicates interest and it also indicates at least in principle the possibility of approach and so approach is a is dopaminergically mediated and it's a positive emotional state and we also know that for example with men if you show them this is a funny little study so you show them a be- the, f- the face of a beautiful woman and her eyes are looking that way or this way or they're looking right at him you can check the activity in the dopaminergic center in a place called the nucleus accumbens which is the same place that cocaine hits face on eye contact that thing lights up mm. lights up even more if she's wearing a red dress so i think you can drive a couple man i tell you what fellas is he lying you come in contact with a female you meet eye to eye Golly, boy, I miss my Charlene so bad. That eye to eye. And it, and it will hit off a, uh, uh, how my man said, uh, dopamine, uh, dopamine, uh, dopaminergic uh, activity, like dope hitting you. It's like, damn, it's like a drug. When you meet that uh, that certain individual by contact, fellas, it's for real. Chemistry is for real. And you just you wish you had a chemistry for everything for for turbulence. So it wouldn't be no turbulence. And everything would be just like what it was. But unfortunately, it's not like that, is it, fellas? It's not like that, is it? We wouldn't be online just be seeking for knowledge and seeking just going through things. As a whole, and you know, and, and, and petrified of failing and not having no no general purpose, and that's what man really want. Man want purpose in life. He want to know his purpose, and he want his purpose to be with a female. That's just real talk. That's just real talk. But go ahead, Professor. Go ahead and cook some more. Go ahead and cook some more, Professor. Professor Peterson up in this motherfucker, boy. A couple of things out of, out of this. And this is where I think people are different than, than other animals, importantly different, is that... So imagine that there's tremendous selection pressure to uh, towards the production, let's say, of men who are good at climbing male dominance hierarchies or, or climbing the male dominance hierarchy. But the thing that's so interesting about people is that we've multiplied our dominance hierarchies. You know, if, if you take an animal that's got a rather static behavioral pattern, then there's, there's a single hierarchy. Elephant seals are a good example of that. So elephant seals, the males are absolutely massive. They're way, way bigger than the females. And they basically have harems, roughly speaking. And they, they use physical prowess as their marker of status essentially and obviously size is a huge part of that because otherwise the male elephant seals wouldn't be as they're massive these things are absolutely enormous and so it's just power slash health you know maybe aggression something like that it's whatever makes them more um suitable for the kind of physical combat that elephant seals engage in so and the degree to which power is associated with dominance status in those sorts of situations seems to be associated with the size differential between males and females. So the more power is an issue with regards to male competence, the larger the males are compared to the females and the more likely the males are gonna have a harem relationship with the females. And you see that a little bit in human beings because men are bigger than women. They're not overwhelmingly bigger, that's sexual dimorphism. And you know, there's some men that are smaller than some women, but on average men are taller and they're, they have more upper body strength and so forth. So there is a power element to male competition, but it's not as extended as it would be among animals, say like, like elephant seals. So in the elephant seal, you see maybe there's one stable set of traits that's being selected for that makes the males more likely to reproduce. But human beings, we're very weird creatures because we're so 
conceptually flexible. And so what seems to have happened, maybe we started, males started selecting each other for do, in dominance competitions for something like cognitive flexibility and, and conscientiousness. It's something like that. So that would be the ability to abstractly represent the world and then the ability to operate effectively within it, to represent yourself socially in a way and then to carry through with that because that enables people to trust you. So it's something like that. And so that produced cortical expansion and then women were selecting men who were good at that and that produced cortical expansion. And then there's an arms race between women and men with regards to intelligence. So the women kept up or they certainly kept up with, with, with intelligence as, as the evolutionary cycle continued. All right, guys, if you've been injured in a car accident, you have to check. That's just real talk. Jordan Peterson, man, if you be bringing it scientifically. And that's what life is. It's science, man. It's, it's, it's to continue to go through the struggle and just be better than you was yesterday. Evolving past that struggle. Mm. Lord have mercy. Lord yeah. have mercy. Yeah, fellas. It is what it is on that. Men carry on so much of a burden that we really don't even talk about it. We really don't. We just go through with it. Sometimes, like, we don't have any feelings whatsoever. You know. Oh, so men don't cry. Alright. Alright. But this is your boy Moose. I hope you liked and enjoyed the video. Make sure you like, share, and subscribe. Like, share, and subscribe. Hit the notification bell. You'll be left in that loop. Peace.